Filmcore. Welcome to Filmcore 2.0. I'm Alex Kirschenbaum. I'm joined today by Charles Perry. Hello, Charles. Howdy. And we are here to discuss Black Mass, the Johnny Depp film about Whitey Bulger, the famous Boston crook. Charles, I really liked Black Mass a lot. Johnny Depp is the movie. Johnny Depp is the star. He's the driving force. He's what you're watching. He's what you care about. And uh, it's really a return to form after 10 years of laziness, a lot of hiding behind makeup and silly voices. And it's nice that he's reined all that in. He has, you know, a very stylistic accent, but I think it works. I agree with you that uh, Johnny Depp is really the number one draw on this movie. I don't think anybody would suggest differently, but I don't think that the character is really strong enough for him to take the entire movie on his back the way that he did, for example, with Jack Sparrow, and to be so memorable that people are going to be quoting him for years down the road. The character is this cement wall of just brutal ambition. And because there's not a lot more depth to him, I really, I had a hard time uh, figuring out, am I rooting for him? Am I rooting against him? Do I have anybody to root for? Is, does everybody in this movie just suck? On the whole, you've got a bunch of characters that are not super likable, and by the end of the movie, they are extraordinarily unlikable. Especially the, uh, the crooked cop. You don't like him that much at first, and then he starts getting promoted, he starts being really greasy, he starts really just fearlessly being a crooked cop without even any pretense of doing work that is above board. He becomes a very tasteless character. Which is fine, but I didn't have anybody else to hold on to. He starts wearing like the gaudy rings, and he starts wearing nicer suits, and his wife, Julian Nicholson, says, what is this new John Connolly that I'm seeing? I like that I was expecting him to clean up, cut ties with Johnny Depp, somehow clear his name, and he instead descends into going so far off the beaten path that at the end of the movie, this isn't really a spoiler because this is history, he gets locked up for 40 years yeah. as a co-conspirator to a, a murder down in Miami. And Nobody falls harder than him, you could argue. Yeah. Besides all the dead people. Even though it makes some attempts to be historically accurate and is based right. on a true story, you don't really feel a lot of influence of outside forces. Like, this is Whitey Bulger's movie. Like, this is a movie about, evidently, a vampire gangster who is <laughs> not an actual vampire, but might as well looks like he yeah. should be one. The eyes, I just was waiting for the teeth to slide out of both sides of his gums. Right. Um, but they never did, so I guess he's not one, but I'm not totally convinced. So what would you say if I said, I think it was a boring choice um, that they never explored more what was actually going on inside of Bulger's head? Right, we talked about the internal conversation not yeah. really being externalized. I think of Whitey Bulger, Johnny Depp's character, as being a mythic mechanism of evil. A, like you allude to, a vampiric figure. So he's less think human almost and I don't need to, to see an internal dialogue because I see I just see his actions and they communicate this this force and that's how he registers and he, that's that's enough he's terrifying every second you're thinking he's gonna go off and a lot of times he does he just kills so many people he's all about you know conquering conquering South Boston conquering rival gangs Tying up all loose ends, killing anybody he suspects will betray him or just doesn't like or whatever. And in the movie, we find out at the end that he's killed at least 19 people, and I'm sure that's a conservative estimate. And most of those people are people that he is associated with personally or professionally for an extended period of time. So he's just this cold, calculating, cruel creature. He's not so much a person. For that reason, I don't need the internal monologue. If nothing else, I was just impressed uh, at the speed with which he could dispatch people that irritated him. So closing thoughts, star ratings. I will decide once and for all that I'm going to give it three and a half stars, not four. I've been convinced, perhaps, that it is limited in certain ways by the slow pace some of the redundant characters that are trying to, the suits that are trying to rein Johnny Depp in, but I still think it's very good. I think Johnny Depp really carries the whole thing, and it's nice to see him trying again. Okay. Um, 
I really agree with you about Johnny Depp's performance, and if I was star rating him alone, I'd give it three and a half stars. But I'm not. I have to give stars to the whole movie, so I'm going to give it two and a half. Um, and I would feel bad giving this a three star rating because I feel like that would mean that I was really giving it my endorsement. And I don't think it's going to last. I don't think the legend of Whitey Bulger is going to grow very much because of this movie, even though I think it should. And also because he didn't actually ever bite anybody's neck, which I found really disappointing since obviously he was actually a vampire. So join us next time when we review Black Hog Brown, which is actually a disaster movie about military qu conquests of a hog farm in Iowa. Compelling, compelling film. I know. Join us next time for Rock, Paper, Scissors 3, the exciting Wolfgang Peterson directed adaptation of the popular hand game featuring Chang Tatum as Rock, Ryan Gosling as Scissors, and Shia LaBeouf as Paper. Join us next time when we review No You Don't, the world's first courtroom drama where a fetus actually sues a mom. It's gonna be a weird one. Isn't that Ryan Gosling playing the fetus? Uh, actually playing the mom. It's all